Eric Politsky. Here. Ron Van Kirk. Here. Tony DeMarco. Here. Debbie Tomasco. Here. Kathy Pucci. Here. Gary Belvere. Here. Kevin Tansky. Here. Would you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you for being part of our meeting this evening. Uh, we do have some uh, minutes for approval dated November 13th, 2017, which was our prior um, council meeting. Does anyone have any comments or questions? Can you get a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. To approve. Barb Politsky? Yes. Ryan Van Kirk? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Debbie Tomasco? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. At this time, we'll have the public session. If anyone in the audience has anything to say for the good and well for the city of Brooklyn, please step forward, state your name and address, and you'll be recognized. Please remember to keep your comments to five minutes or fewer. No one? Okay, we'll now move on to reports of committees, commissions, and boards. We'll begin this evening with the Recreation Board, Councilwoman Belbier. Thank you. Um, the Recreation Board met last week, Tuesday, at 7 o'clock, and there were a few things that we were discussing, um, which I think is a great thing. They're thinking of having private swimming lessons. And the great thing about the private swim lessons is it's not only for children, but adults can partake in that also. So it'll be starting up this winter. Uh, the Rec will also be starting their extended holiday hours. December 26th, 27th, and 28th, and 29th, and January 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th, they'll be open from 1 to 4. They're also having a skate with Santa Sunday, December 10th, from 2.45 to 3.45. Ugly Sweater Skate Party is December 15th, that's the theme, from 8 to 9.15, and the one that they had um, just last month Miss um, McGinty, our director, said that the response was very, very good. So they're looking forward to having this ugly sweater skate party. The rec center is um, going to start something called Fun Day Packages. They're from December 26th and January 2nd. It's going to be from 1 to 2 is going to be an open skate. From 3 to 4 they give you a snack. Um, <clears throat> From, um, four, from three to four swimming, and the price is $10. So it includes swimming, skating, skate rental, snack, and um, tickets to the Brooklyn High School basketball game. I mean, you can't beat that for $10. It's children 17 and under, they're all welcomed, and children six and under must be accompanied by an adult. So if you're interested, please call over there at the skate, uh, uh, at the rec center. Brooklyn, the Brooklyn Rec Center is also going to feature a Friday night basketball, um, it's just called Friday Night Basketball, and it's going to be held at the Brooklyn Field House. It's uh, Friday nights beginning January 12th from 2018 through February 16th, uh, 2018. The program is open to residents only, and this is a great thing to introduce your children, especially if they're on teams at school, just for extra practice. They teach them footwork, passing, dribbling, and shooting, and um, grades two to six, the cost will be $35 and they have a whole list of sessions. So if you're interested in it, call the program coordinator, Jen O'Banion, and her number is 216-635-4274. And that completes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Velvier. Next up is the Board of Zoning Appeals, Commissioner Colson. Thank you, Mr. Van Kirk. Uh, the Board of Zoning Appeals met on Thursday, November 16th. They heard a request from George Roman for a nine inch variance for an air conditioning unit uh, side from the side property line and a two foot four inch variance to the adjacent residential structure at 8901 Bidoff Road. Uh, this request was approved. Uh, the next request was uh, from Repros Inc. for great work employment. This was for a three foot variance to maximum area of the wall sign at 7020 Bidoff Road. Bidoff Plaza. Uh, this was approved. And the last request was from Matthew L. Weber 
for uh, 11 foot, one inch variance to the maximum height of 42 feet in a limited industrial district to construct a four story, uh, 53 foot, one inch high hotel on Tiedemann Road. Uh, no address at this time. This is behind the Cracker Barrel. Um, permanent parcels 433 and 433-09-017. That variance was also approved. Uh, next scheduled meeting will be December 21st. And all those meetings are held at 6 p.m. here in City Hall Conference Room. That completes my report. Thank you, Mr. Colsar. Next up is the Planning Commission, Councilman DeMarco. So the next meeting will be held on Thursday, December 7th at 6 p.m. in the uh, City Hall Conference Room to hear the following a request from LaBella Associates for an amendment to plans approved at September 7, 2017 Planning Commission meeting for a new truck entrance drive and deletion of additional parking area in front of building at 9500 Brook Park Road Permanent parcel number 433-18-001, docket number 9-2017-2. All individuals are welcome to uh, attend the meeting, and that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. DeMarco. Next up is Economic Development, <coughs> Council Pucci. Thank you. Good evening. The Economic Development Committee met earlier this evening at 6 p.m. in the conference room. We approved the minutes from the meeting of October 10th, and we discussed four ordinances that are on our agenda this evening. Ordinances 2017-81, 82, 83, and 84. These all deal with the purchase of property. There are seven parcels at Tiedemann and Memphis that we're looking to assemble, um, basically purchase from the individual owners and assemble them so hopefully a developer would then come in and either build an office building or some other commercial use. Um, right now the estimated price for the total of all seven of them is $844,000. This money would come from out of our economic development fund. And some of the advantages are that as a city we're in a, posi a better position to assemble the parcels. Right now, these parcels are not generating any revenue for the city, so there's a potential, if this is redeveloped, that we would then uh, collect you know, income tax and property taxes on these properties long term. Um, as owner, we would also have control over the development, including a timeline. So for example, placing a deadline on the project so that we wouldn't end up with a situation that we were in where we were waiting for so long for the senior living project to come for, to fruition. Um, we did have a discussion that we do not want retail and uh, Mr. Butler is going to look at some options so that we would be able to probably through a deed restriction prohibit um, retail as a primary use and the committee did recommend that council uh, approve these ordinances and that completes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Pucci. Next up is our school board liaison, Councilwoman Polizzi. Um, I have really have no report tonight. Okay, thanks. Sure. Sorry about that. Right, uh, the Finance Committee meeting did meet this evening just prior to our council meeting. Uh, I will just discuss the items that were on third reading and the new new items this evening. Uh, resolution 2017-13, requesting the county fiscal officer to advance taxes from the proceeds of the 2017 tax levies, pursuant to the Ohio Revised Code Section 321.34 and the Finance Committee did uh, recommend the Council adopt. Ordinance 2017-77 is also up for third reading adoption to amend Section 182.02 of Chapter 182 Income Tax Effective January 1, 2016 of the Codified Ordinance of the City of Brooklyn, Ohio. And uh, this was an update to our uh, ordinances uh, regarding lottery winnings. We've discussed this before, but uh, Council, or excuse me, the Committee did recommend the Council adopt. Um, ordinance 2017-79 is only on second reading, but I wanted to go over the changes. This is the uh, annual appropriations for 2018. Uh, the total proposed 2018 general fund permanent appropriations now stands at $16,479,864. That's an increase of $766,383 from the 2017 permanent appropriations. Uh, the majority of those increases are due to increase in payroll costs and also an increase in the additional debt payment that we had to take on when we uh, did, uh, reconstructed road on road 
uh, this summer, well, in, in this fall as well. So that in the total proposed 2018 permit appropriation for all funds now stands at $25,025,223. Uh, in that in is an in includes $2,243,702 uh, of capital expenditures and uh, just over 1.5 million of that is for road construction <coughs> for 2018. And that was uh, placed on second reading this evening. Um, under new business, uh, we had ordinances 2017-81, 82, 83, 84. Uh, those are the ordinances that Mrs. Pucci just alluded to, and she already explained those, so I'm not going to go to those again, but that's on first reading as well. And then, uh, and if Mr. Rudgers wants to add anything, he can add that in his economic development report this evening. And then ordinance 2017-85, uh, this is, the administration is asking for an emergency adoption. And this is the ordinance dealing with what Mrs. Belvere just talked about a second ago, establishing a fees for the private learn to swim classes at the Brooklyn Natatorium and Outdoor Swim Complex. And uh, this will provide private swimming lessons at the rec center, which I think is a great idea. And the cost for that for a Brooklyn resident would be, be between $15 and $30 per half hour class. A Parma Parma Heights resident would be $17.50 to $35 per half an hour. And a non-resident would be $20 or $40 per half an hour class. And that is all we had in the uh, finance committee this evening. We will now move on with reports of council. We begin this evening with Mrs. Banker. Thank you, Mr. Banker. Good evening. I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving and much to be thankful for in the year 2017. This is your last chance for Medicare beneficiaries to choose a new supplement or drug plan for 2018 because the deadline is December 7th. Appointments are still available and will be on Friday, December 1st at the Senior Center. So call them if you are interested. It's 216-635-4222. So looking forward to the Christmas season, the decorations on houses in our city, the contest to see who has the best, Santa arriving with candy for the children, the concerts at various churches, and don't forget the shopping. I plan to say Merry Christmas. I hope you do too. Last Saturday, I had the opportunity to see the Christmas lights at Cleveland's Public Square. If you have a chance, please do so. I still have Crocker Park on my bucket list. I hope I can get there this year. And that ends my report. Thank you, Mrs. Plitsky. Next up is Mr. DeMarco. I have no report. Okay. Next up is Ms. Tomasco. Yes, good evening. <clears throat> um, I just wanted to comment a little bit that tonight we are going to be discussing those four properties on the corner of um, Memphis and Tiedemann. I just wanted to use that to comment a couple of things general about economic development here in the city as we move forward. Um, I, I think those properties are good that we're looking at getting that because as Ms. Um, Pucci pointed out and also as uh, Mr. Yu just pointed out, it will give Brooklyn the control of those properties, which in the past has been a problem. We've had undeveloped land in the city and we didn't own it, so we were at the mercy of obviously whoever owned it for what they were going to put there and when they were going to put it there. So this will allow us to control it. I guess the only question I have is um, how many office buildings are enough in the city? I know this is something Andy assures me that there's uh, incredible demand for office buildings here in Brooklyn. It, we are a great location right off the freeways. Um, you know, Brooklyn is a great location. But I'm hoping that if we do do office buildings there, it might potentially preclude us, you know, having to invade the park or even talk about that again. Um, but I'm just wondering, I, I do read Clay, Cray, Clay's, yes, Crane's Cleveland business. And it seems like there are a lot of vacant office parks elsewhere in the county. Although, they, again, they might be older office buildings and not as new. Um, but I know some prime cities like Strongsville, et cetera, have office parks that are vacant. So I, I guess I'm just voicing my opinion to say that I don't think the sole goal of economic development is to bring revenue into the city. I think the goal of economic development should be to enhance the city. I, and it, having said that, I, I don't think every square inch of open land in Brooklyn needs to be turned into some sort of revenue generating machine. I don't want to come off sounding not like a capitalist and instead like some tree hugger, but parks are nice, green space is nice, trees are nice. Um, I was driving out of Middleburg Heights the other day and they had a sign up in Middleburg 
great parks make great neighborhoods. They're putting parks in to the city. And I'm just cautioning again um, that let's keep the parks, let's keep as much green space as we can when we build something. Can we please keep some trees? I, I was really disappointed that with the senior center going in, they just mowed down all the trees uh, for the most part. And I just am saying that economic development, I would really like it to enhance the city in a physical way as well. And I'd also like to see economic development as part of a global plan for the city. I know the issue three was defeated, but at a prior meeting, um, the mayor had commented, as we were talking about the Recreation Center, that she had some thoughts and plans on the Recreation Center, the future of the Rec Center, but she didn't want to reveal those or talk about those until after the election. Well, now that these ele the election is over, I hope that we can um, hear a little bit about that. And again, I think what I'm asking for is an economic de development plan that looks at where we might focus on putting office buildings, where we're going to keep parks, what are we going to do with the rec center, et cetera, et cetera. And I think as opposed to being less open with the people, I think we need to be more open and really share that so that the next time some kind of a zoning vote or something goes before the public, they know what they're voting for. And they know what they're voting for in the context of the future of the entire city. So I just wanted to get that out there um, because I, uh, once you tear a park down, it's down, it's gone. And I don't want to see vacant buildings where we once had parkland. And that's all I have for this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Musco. Next up is Mrs. Pucci. Thank you. Um, I'll be very brief this evening. First, I'd like to welcome Acting Fire Chief Kevin Paul that's to right. our meeting. And um, I'd just like to offer my condolences to the family and friends of Jordan Taylor, who was the young man who was killed. That completes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pucci. Next up is Mrs. Bobbier. I don't have a report tonight, sorry. Thank you. All right, next up is Mr. Tansky. Thank you, Mr. Banker. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the directors and a special thank you to Mr. John Verba and the service workers on working to get services in the city accomplished with less workers than we had in the past. Also thanks to Dave Colsar for keeping up with the vacant properties and rental house, rental house ordinances. I also want to thank Chief Melky for his speedy callbacks to me on handling situations on various concerns by our residents. I appreciate all your hard work and effort in fulfilling our needs of our city and keeping our community safe. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Chansky. Then we'll now move on with the mayor's report. Mayor. Thank you. I hope everyone had a terrific Thanksgiving. Uh, I just wanted to thank one of uh, Brooklyn's business, Triad Engineering, who, did, who donated all of the turkeys for our Thanksgiving baskets for the families in need here in Brooklyn, as well as St. Thomas More, whose parishioners donated tons of food, and the, the children on the city or the uh, school council who put together all the baskets, as well as Westbrook Apartments, who, did, who donated food to this cause as well. So we just have a terrific community of people who give to those in need here. And I wanted to recognize those businesses and parishes. Also, I want to remind everyone that Santa will be coming to Brooklyn on the 9th and 10th. And the schedule has been published in various places on the website, uh, on the city's newsletter. Uh, so if you are interested or if you, you don't have access to that, you could call the front desk here at City Hall and get that information on the schedules. It's uh, typically the same route as every year that we we do um, also our law director just put out a guide to trees for our city uh, they published it on the Facebook page the website um, typically what happens after storms residents have a, a ton of questions about the trees that, that are on tree lawns versus the trees in their property and what happens if they fall in certain places and who's liable uh, so our law director did a nice job of putting something together if you have any specific questions it's a good resource to look at uh, in the future. Uh, I want to let everyone know that Rodone would be closing up on the final paving this week. And I just want to thank everybody for their patience. I know there, there's been some hiccups along the way, but um, I think in the very end, everyone will, happy, will be happy with the results and the final outcome. And I'm uh, looking forward to that moment when everything is, is done. 
and there will be some things that we will have to revisit in the spring just because of the timing uh, especially on the fixing up the tree lawn so just be patient but the road will be done uh, very soon I also want to welcome Kevin Paul who's, uh, who's named the acting fire chief and, and lastly, just kind of want to address Ms. Tomasco uh, and mentioned a couple things. Uh, thank you for the comments on the consolidation of these properties and Council's consideration of this. Uh, Andy Udris, the Economic Development Director, and I have been working with the Jehovah's Witness property owners for well over a year. Uh, you know, they have their main headquarters in New York City, and it's one of those things that we have been looking to, you know, potentially consolidate for an economic development option in the city. Um, there's many irons in the fire. I know issue three has got brought up time and time and time again. And um, it, when we, we started together, Andy and I, uh, last January, uh, we put a lot of irons in the fire and you, you kind of see what pans out and what, uh, what doesn't. But when you're a new administration, you have to work on things and continue to work on things. Um, so she mentioned the rec center. I've been working on this since day one of the office and I've been exploring every possible option. But a valuable lesson I learned in issue three is the residents of this city need a finalized plan before they are willing to look at anything. So uh, until I feel like a finalized plan is ready to present to the city council here, I will not be putting anything forward. Um, and, and there's just a lot of moving parts in everything we do here at City Hall. A ton of moving parts legally, contractually, with city council being administrative body versus working with the legislative body. Uh, so I will go in uh, what the manner I see fit to present to the public and to city council where I think uh, the most strategic plan will be best for the city moving forward. Um, and that concludes my report. Thank you, Mayor. We'll now move on with director's reports. We begin this evening with our finance director, Mr. Schaefer. Good evening. RITA auditors are on site at City Hall Monday through Wednesday of this week fulfilling the city's administrative subpoena program. If you received a letter from RITA <coughs> requesting documentation for non-filed years and did not respond, you were issued an administrative subpoena to appear at City Hall. If you have any questions, please call RITA directly at 1-800-860 7482. That's 1-800-860-7482. If you get a busy signal, please continue trying to call. The Rita Call Center is experiencing extremely high call volumes due to the administrative subpoena program. The 2018 permanent appropriations are on second reading tonight and up for third reading adoption next meeting December 11th where there will also be um, the executing the transfers and advances for 2017 up for third reading and adoption. I will also be asking that council approves a change number two to the 2017 permanent appropriations by emergency during that meeting meaning you'll have all of those proposed changes in your packet on Thursday, December 7th, and I'm asking for this emerg by emergency so that I can get this change number two approved by the county fiscal officer and keep it the city's uh, certificate of estimated resources in balance for 2017. Now, when we make those change number two to the permanent appropriation, I will also reserve the right to do the same thing for the final meeting of 2017. If something unforeseen, if we have an unforeseen expenditure in the last three weeks of 2017 and there's a necessity for change number three, obviously if something comes up, I will get it to council immediately and try to get out of head of what, um, what the emergency is. But um, basically the name of the game, we're gonna be meeting with the, apart with the different departments, trying to liquidate what we can and move money between wages and benefits and the other expenditures and see exactly where everything <coughs> needs to go. Um, the additional complication is we have three pay periods or three paychecks in December um, and we don't know as far as overtime, if there's snow. Um, so we will be watching that closely and um, keeping council apprised of that. And that completes my report. 
Thank you, Mr. Schaefer. Also, once again, thank you for getting everything done for this year. It's the first time since I've been on council we've had it, we'll have it done before the start of the next year, so thank you for that and your team. I will now move on with um, our service director, Mr. Verba. Thank you, uh, Mr. Van Kirk. I am happy to report that on Wednesday, November 29th, Katz Construction will be putting down the final layer of asphalt on Rodone, and they will be beginning at 7 a.m. Just keep in mind that after the final paving is uh, completed, um, it should be open to traffic both ways. Also keep in mind that there's still some work that needs to be completed, but it should not impact the traffic. The leak pickup uh, schedule for this week is as follows. If your garbage pickup is on Monday, we will pick your leaves up tomorrow on Tuesday. If your garbage is picked up on Tuesday, we'll get your leaves on Wednesday. And I don't know how we're gonna do it, but we're gonna attempt to get your leaves, uh, if your garbage day is on Thursday, we will also get your leaves on Thursday as well. Um, and we'll probably go into a little bit of Friday too for Thursday's route. And that completes my report. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. Maybe, maybe if I can ask. Um, I know the mayor said that some of the work for our down, especially on the tree lines, will be um, deferred until the spring. I just want to make sure when that happens, that we are really taking a close look because in other areas we've had problems with the tree lawns and trying to get them to come back and you know they end up real sparse and with a lot of weeds and all that so we just need to make sure it's on our radar that we're really going to make sure they do a good job yeah they're going to fill in all the tree lawns um they already did on the west side um with soil and then they'll do the same on the east side and then they'll come back and seed in the spring okay and it's it's it has to be done according to spec so we we've held back uh money until we're satisfied that it has grown um, I believe it's like 60% or 70% according to the spec mm -hmm. that it has to grow so okay. technically it doesn't have to be a hundred percent I know it's always a but we will we will definitely uh, we're definitely more stringent and uh, on this uh, bid than we were the last times thank you and next up is our police chief chief Mulkey. thank you mr. Baker um, as you may be aware, we had a homicide on Saturday, November 18th in the early morning. Uh, I just wanted to uh, read a brief statement that we had prepared for the police department. The, the homicide investigation of Jordan Taylor is still active and ongoing. In the hope of preserving the integrity of the, the, integrity of the investigation, we're asking for the public's patience and understanding. Members of the police department are actively working and collaborating with other agencies to find answers to many of the questions that you seek. Excuse me. Much of the recovered evidence from the scene is physical. We're working with the uh, Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigation to process it and, and analyze it. Um, again, the investigation points to this not being a random act. Uh, the ongoing investigation is dynamic and extensive, and rest assured we are diligently working to find justice for the Taylor family. Um, I appreciate it. Um, it's changing every day, I can tell you that much, and the guys are working very hard trying to get answers for you. Um, we don't have any suspect information to release at this moment, but uh, when we do, I'll assure you that it gets released um, to the public. And the other half of my report is a little happier, even though the mayor stole my thunder. Santa Claus will be on Saturday the 9th and, the ten and Sunday the 10th. Saturday, he will be south of Bidoff, in the Brooklyn Acres and also Easter Ridge, starting at about noon. And uh, on the 10th Sunday, he'll be north of Bidoff, doing the streets and the Westbrook Apartments and the other apartment complexes, uh, like uh, Floridians and the uh, Park Views on Sunday, again, starting at noon. You'll hear the music coming down your street, so uh, grab the kids. This is a tradition that's well over 50 years, Mr. Parker. Well over 50 years in the making. So uh, I wanna thank the Brooklyn Police Auxiliaries Mr. Parker in particular, who's been doing it at least that long, and uh, the mayor for donating the uh, the candy, I believe, this year again. So, thanks, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Thank you, Chief. We'll now move on with our Economic Dire Development Director, Mr. Udris. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Um, the only one, uh, report I'd like to add is regarding the properties that are at the corner of Tiedemann and um, Memphis. 
Um, Councilwoman Pucci clearly uh, stated what the benefits of the project are, but I want to reiterate that currently one of the problems that we have on Memphis is this perception that um, the area is a little bit run down, slum and blighted, particularly that corner where you see a lot of uh, grass that hasn't been cut and uh, lawns that haven't been maintained as well. And I think by consolidating the seven acres and being able to uh, attract new businesses, we'll be able to uh, eliminate that slum and blighting influence and actually increase the property values of the adjacent property owners uh, up and down Memphis Avenue and on Tiedemann. So I think that's very important when you look at economic development strategy as to what one project can do on a very prominent corner have an impact on a lot of other properties throughout the city. That's the end of my report. Thank you, Mr. We'll now move on with our legislation for this evening. Uh, the first thing we have is a request for an acceptance of a grant uh, for the police department. Mayor Gallagher and members of city council, I'm requesting permission to accept a $2,500 community grant from Walmart. Our department will be using these funds toward our Shop of the Cop program this holiday season. Thank you, uh, Scott Melke, police chief. Move um, to authorize the acceptance of the grant. Second. To accept the grant. Barb Politsky? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Debbie Tomasco? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belbeer? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Up for third reading adoption this evening is resolution 2017-13 requesting the county fiscal officer to advance taxes from the proceeds of the 2017 tax levies pursuant to the Ohio revised code section 321.34. Comments or questions? Motion to adopt. To adopt. Second. To adopt, Barb Flitsky? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Debbie Tomasco? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belbeer? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Ordinance 2017-77 to amend section 182.02 of chapter 182 income tax effective January 1st, 2016 of the codified ordinances of the city of Brooklyn, Ohio. Any comments or questions? Move to adopt. Second. To adopt, Barb Politsky? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Debbie Tomasco? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Next up is Ordinance 2017-78, authorizing interfund transfers and advances during 2017. Also on second reading is Ordinance 2017-79, annual appropriations for 2018. On first reading this evening is Ordinance 2017-81, authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with the Midwest Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses for the purchase of certain real property known as 4346 Tiedemann Road, permanent parcel numbers 432-03-001, 432-003-007, and 432-03008. Also on first reading this evening is Ordinance 2017-82, authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Eli A. Mina for the purchase of certain real property known as 10139 Memphis Avenue, permanent parcel number 4320302. On first reading, Ordinance 2017-83, authorizing the mayor to enter an agreement with Allison Lowry for the purchase of certain real property known as 4302 Tiedemann Road, permanent parcel number 4320303. On first reading, Ordinance 2017-84, authorizing the mayor to enter an agreement with Lottie Taylor Blake for the purchase of certain real property known as 10100 Manila Avenue, permanent parcel numbers 4320304, 4320305, and 4320306. And lastly, at the request of the administration of past uh, by emergency measure this evening is ordinance 2017-85 establishing fees for private learn to swim classes at the city of Brooklyn Natatorium and outdoor swim complex any, any comments or questions Introduce you know, suspend the rules second to suspend the rules Bart Politsky yes Ron Van Kirk yes Tony DeMarco yes Debbie Tomasco yes Kathy Pucci yes Mary Belvere yes Kevin Tansky yes to adapt, Barb Kalitsky? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Debbie Tomasco? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvier? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. That is the conclusion of our agenda for this evening. Do any council members, the mayor, any directors have anything else to add? Motion to adjourn.
One more thing. Um, we were uh, scheduled to go into executive session this evening, uh, but at the request of our law director, we're going to defer that to the next meeting. Okay. And I will second the motion to adjourn. To adjourn, Barb Politsky. Yes. Ron Van Kirk. Yes. Tony DeMarco. Yes. Debbie Tomasco. Yes. Kathy Pucci. Yes. Gary Bilby. Yes. Evan Tansky. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Have a blessed evening. Thank you.